Hey everyone, Brett here, and sometimes I wear a beret, and I am behind on blaster reviews. I recently discovered that I have quite the backlog of blasters that I just have not talked about on my channel. I've shared some sneaks and peeks on my Instagram here and there, but some of these blasters are now getting quite overdue. And instead of doubling down and making dedicated review videos one by one, let's do a bulk review. And I kinda wanna leave this open to you guys. Get some feedback like which ones do you like more? Which ones do you like less? Which are you interested in hearing more about? Cause it's quite the variety. Some are from the community, while others are from uh, major companies that have sent them to me for review purposes. So I'll disclose which ones I paid for myself and which ones were sent to me free of charge. Let's talk about them. We'll kick things off with the flak. Now I have actually shown a little bit of this one on my channel. I made a short with a previous version of this blaster. The main reason I never got to doing a full review was because I really only kept it in this main configuration. I wanted to take it into a game using the Half Dart magazines. I realized before I go any further, this is the FLAK, F-L-A-K from Captain Slug, but it was printed and sent to me by Boomstick Mods. He did an amazing job in my opinion, matching the colors. Can you guess it? Yes, the Sentinel, and it looks just fan freaking tastic in my opinion. Now the reason I didn't actually make a full review for this one is because, well, I, I had a small problem with my first version stock. As you can see there, well, it lived a good life. It got me through at least one small round of play and then it said, have a nice day. So there are a few different configurations for the flak, which is kind of the most unique part of it. It's a lever action blaster and in the half dart version oh man there's a lot of movement and there's a lot of movement just in general that i'm not uh, a huge fan of it's a delicate blaster but it is very fun it's also kind of quiet so it's got its pros and cons i still think it looks really really cool the other versions that i do have in a bag here's my goodie bag again boomstick just sent this to me i should say it wasn't free of charge we did an exchange where i sent him a bunch of ballistic balls and then he sent me a blaster. I think I got the better deal, but you can be the judge of that. So I have a version that will shoot ballistic balls. I have a version that will shoot uh, the shell strike shells, the trilogy shells, not the sledge fire shells, funny enough. That, that was what I asked for. And then I also have one that shoots rockets. So here is the rocket barrel, rocket fits on the outside. I have never tried it with Mega XL because I actually don't have any Mega XL. I have tried it with the ballistic balls, though obviously it's not in that configuration. And then this version is the one I haven't tried yet for the Shell Strike Trilogy shells. So I'll have to get to that eventually. It does feel a tad bit fragile and that's been one of my turnoffs to it. I think the velocity is okay. The, the, the rate of fire is kind of slow, but that's expected for a blaster like this. So I've seen some people really enjoy it and some other people uh, correctly when I handed this to them, they're like, nope, that's not really for me. Here's a Talon magazine on the side here. Load right there. I'm going to break it on camera. What did I do wrong? Um, Pay no attention here. I do the best blast reviews ever. Looks like my catch has a problem. Oh, wait, no. Turns out if you uh, actually take the time to fire this properly, uh, it will work. So that's, uh, I guess, some sort of testament to how the flak can be a bit finicky. If you try and use it properly, it should work. Even a dry fire doesn't feel too bad for this guy. Really weird looking blaster but also really, really cool. And that long stock gives it a very unique profile. So that's the flak. Next, we've got another Captain Slug blaster, this one coming from Captain Slug himself. This is the Rival Burn, version three, if I'm not mistaken. This one has been with me for quite some time and I've held off on making an official review for it because I wasn't a huge fan of it when I first got it, and it kind of took me by surprise because when I first saw this blaster, I was like, yes please, that looks awesome. There are extra pieces you can get right here, but it looks really, really cool in my opinion. And so this was all printed by Captain Slug. He sent it to me free of charge. I did buy my own um, 
Where's the mag release? Aha, that's right. The massive button you see right here, if you push that, you can take out your magazine. So yes, this is the Worker 15 round magazine. I think it's cool that Captain Slug actually did want to design a blaster that works with these because these Worker mags in standard Nerf rival blasters didn't apparently work super well. Kind of weird, Worker, maybe check that. I expressed some of my initial concerns to Captain Slug. He sent me some more parts after I did. Here they are. My main one was that I was having some catch problems upon priming the blaster and then it would like jostle loose when I was going to prime it forward, which is not something you want to have happen. I did confirm this with someone else who was also a recipient of an early version that we were having similar issues, seemed to be more present with the heavier spring. While some of the comfort issues weren't 100% perfect for me, but acceptable, it was the performance. I just wasn't seeing it there. And the, the hop up in the front with a little screw jutting in, where, where is that? Did I take the screw out? Okay, well, I can't show that off then. Overall aesthetic appeal kind of started getting lost on me when I remembered how well my previous Rival Burn performed compared to how this one didn't perform. Because I had a Rival Burn prior to this one, and I really, really liked it. And this one is, uh, is a unique take, and I really do like having the magazine in line. I just don't know if this was the best way to then move forward. I don't miss the magazine sticking out the bottom like this, but I do miss the overall simplicity and performance that that one brought to the table. All that being said, there could be some things that have been tweaked. This was many, many months ago since I received this blaster, and there's always the potential of user error from this guy not doing the uh, official checks when I maybe took some things apart and put them back together. And again, the parts that he sent me since I have not fully installed because I was uh, moving at the time. Rival Burn V3, I don't know what V we're on right now. Hopefully some things have been revised since then because I think this is a really cool offering if it does work well for uh, rival enthusiasts. Continuing on with our community blasters, we have the Nanomag. It's a jolt that fires half darts. It, what, what more do you want in life? I love this. I love this so much. When I first saw this, I was like, ah, oh, yes. So it does take talons only. If you've never seen this before, this is by Galactic Creations. His logo is uh, on there as well on the blaster. It does a nice job of putting them right there. So I did actually choose the colors for this one. I just wanted them to be blue. I put in an order for this initial blaster myself, and then the creator asked if I would like anything else to go with it, or he, he just said that he was going to send some additional uh, front ends. So while I did initially order this one, I got a bunch of different fronts, which are really, really cool. So this one is an N-Strike barrel lug front, and then this one is just the three different Picatinnies. Is it necessary for a mag-fed jolt? I don't know. In my opinion, yes. One of my main concerns when I first got it was that this back piece seemed to be a little too thin and that it was starting to crack. And so then he sent me another one completely, which I did not ask him to do. So he did that free of charge. Thank you very much. I was tinkering around with it so you can see that these shells are, are coming apart. Oops, sorry for that. And uh, I was just experimenting with what I could put in and, and what looked cool in my opinion. Um, this, <laughs> it's not actually like a, a real holographic site or any site. It's just printed, but it, you know, it has a cool aesthetic. There's more blaster that is just 3D printed plastic than there is actual jolt because this is for all intents and purposes an actual, what is this, the nano fire? I never have owned a nano fire before this. He did send the blaster with the prints. So again, thank you, uh, but kind of thank you. I don't, I don't love this. I like the regular jolt. I don't know how I feel about the nano fire, but it works. Elite standard, which is really dumb <laughs> in a good way. And you can also front load like full length darts. So it's effectively the exact same jolt. You just don't have to open and close the uh, breech if you're going to do that. I love this. I think it's hilarious. And yes, it is a crime that I have not used this in a game yet. The nano mag is so funny. And I think I've seen the creator is continuing his hilarious endeavors and experimenting with more stuff. 
So like everything I show off today, link to his Etsy will be in the description box below. You can't get much better than this. Another community blaster that has recently fallen into my hands is The Skewer by Taffy of Chamomile Designs. I should probably check what the actual pronunciation is. This cute little candy CD right there. This one in particular was sent to me by my good friend Kyle at Pink Dragon Tuning on Etsy with all the personality that you would expect of my modding. And also shout out to Silver Fox Industries for helping me assemble this one. And also there's a, uh, currently the, uh, the RAM is kind of incomplete. I was taking off the original one that he sent. I have a different one to throw off in a little bit. Just a standard uh, so I can actually load Talon magazines when the breach is closed. Otherwise, I think it's pretty much complete. Nice and janky little wrap on the back in case I need any extra string. He also sent a bunch of these really cool little uh, tags, these keychains. Um, here's one for Taffy, there's one for Kelly, I think, and then there's me, that's me. And I just put them on the front of the barrel because I was like, why not? I think it's funny. <laughs> it makes it feel like it's a video game or something. The skewer has I want to say taken our mod community by storm in a great way. I love what people have been doing with this one. I have seen the 95 crossbow variant and that one is oh so attractive, but I have to resist because I obviously haven't even used this one to the best of my abilities. In a nutshell, skewer once again, talon fed blaster. Oh, I can't, <laughs> I need to replace the ram so I can actually do that. Just prime it back, load it in, close it and then you would fire. However, I have no darts in there, so I'm not going to. These things are apparently super duper powerful too. I'm very impressed that it's as powerful as it is. Not a, you know, not criticizing the design at all. I just didn't realize that this thing was capable of like 200 FPS. I think the uh, print quality on this one is acceptable. It's relatively straight. I'm gonna have to straighten it out again when I, you can't see that. Hello. I'm gonna have to re-straighten this out when I go back in and replace the ramrod, so it doesn't matter to me too much right now. Uh, but the skewer is a very attractive blaster. There are many places that are doing some really cool skewer mods, which is kind of a redundant thing to say because the skewer is a community blaster, which means it's already a mod. I don't know, but that crossbow one is potentially another thing I'll look out for in the future, just like the double barrel skewer. Holy crap, what is going on? This is cool. Can't wait to play with it at my next uh, high power game. Now let's move on to some official industry names. Uh, Brett, we've seen this way too many times. Why are you showing us the Dart Zone Pro Mark III box? Uh, because I don't think I really did a review of this blaster. Yes, I got this early, like a few other creators did, a few other reviewers did on YouTube to show off on my YouTube channel. And I was putting together a review I did some extra footage, I got some at Dr. Flux's place, we found some things we liked, some things we didn't like, and here it is. This is the Dart Zone Pro Mark III. Have you heard of it? And that's what kept going through my mind after that day of shooting. I had some things I wanted to show off in a video, and there was obviously the problem that I found with the Talon Mag incompatibilities, and then some other people found incompatibilities, and some other people found they didn't have incompatibilities, and now it's a hit or miss. I guess they never miss. Sorry. I realized very quickly that everyone was going to be making the same G-Dang review video for the Dart Zone Pro Mark III, and I was like, you guys don't want to see my same exact review video because other people are going to do it better. So you know what I did? I just left that footage and I made a Burt review. And Dart Zone hasn't hated me, or they haven't called it me out about it just yet. So they must have liked it. Thanks, Dart Zone. But that being said, I haven't done an actual review of this blaster, and I don't know if I want to do an actual review. I think it deserves to be included here because to the purposes of what they probably expected for a review, I don't know if I did that. But hey, Dart Zone, if you're looking for some unconventional marketing, I'm your guy. So that's the Dart Zone Pro Mark III, uh, available now on targetdart.com. And yes, they sent it to me free of charge, Shill Brett, reporting for duty. Speaking of Dart Zone, here's a Busby Blaster. The Air Warriors Snipe. Yeah, we know that exists, Brett, what about it? So funny thing, when I first made my review of the two main Busby Blasters of this year that disappointed me, that being the 
Tetra Shot and the Thunder Shot, I said that Busby would probably never send me something in the future. Of course, I ate my words. They sent me a replacement version of the Thunder Shot, and then they said they would send me some other stuff in the future. So I said, okay, I would like these blasters. And they delivered. On their new website, they had a listing and the snipe was on there. And I was like, the snipe? That's right, the snipe is an awesome blaster. It's not my favorite compared to the Sentinel, but the snipe also had some really good mod potential. And now it's in blue. I'd be happy to test this out more in the future. Obviously it's still in box, so I haven't done anything with it. But Busby did send me this new version of the snipe. So I think if this is still something that they're making, they haven't changed anything about it, then this is still a great offering. And they offered to send me one other blaster, or I should say I explicitly asked for this one because I was curious about it and didn't know if it was going to be available in my area. The Compound Bow. My expectations for this are, mm, I don't know. This one claims to blast up to 90 feet. The snipe claimed 100 feet. I've seen some things about this blaster already. They're a bit mixed. Do I expect this to be the most amazing blaster in the world? Not necessarily. Do I expect this to be fun? Probably. I would love to get to the compound bow eventually. Hopefully I'll have a game where I can actually use it in the future. But the compound bow I think is a very Busby blaster. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, hopefully. What we'll find out. So thank you Busby for sending me these blasters recently and I cannot wait to actually play with them. And also speaking of Busby, um, my transitions are really off today. Joyan 2-in-1 Scatter Foam Popper Water Gun 2-piece. What the frick? Brett, what are you talking about? So, so, you know the Busby monorail? This ain't it, chief. I've seen this floating around for a bit, and I finally found a listing on Amazon where I could get this blaster. This is so dumb. This is a knockoff Busby monorail, but it doesn't do monorail things. It's a ball blaster and it's a water blaster. So included in this pack are two, as it says, it's a two piece, cool. It includes eight of these little foam balls which eat with each of them. And what you do is you load the balls in through the front. Four, I think it's a six. Five, nope, five. Five is the capacity. And then you can load water through the side right here. Not gonna do that here because why would I want to get everything wet? But here's the squirt component and here's the ball component. And it's actually pump action, release forward, and now you just pull the trigger. This also would activate the squirt mechanism in the front so you can do two in one blasting with your two blasters in the one package. Whoa. You can tell as well that this is smaller than a general Busby monorail. It is quite small. So, com ooh, comfort bad. But there's something so adorable about the size of this thing. I like the colors too. The white with dark blue and light blue. Something about that actually is very appealing to me. Compete. Crack shot. Um, what? Ax shot. CR. I don't know what to say about that. This is clearly a ripoff of a Busby blaster not being sold by Busby themselves. So it's uh, questionable for a lot of reasons. And it's also very low powered. I don't know if there's actually much more to show off in a full length review other than what you've just seen, but this exists. It's uh, not too expensive. I did buy it with my own money. I guess the one other piece of data just to know is that these balls are not the same size as Rival or like the hog wild popper balls. So for a quick comparison, again, the ones that came with this blaster and here are the others. So they're slightly uh, smaller than the ones that you get from like hog wild. There's a rainbow one to compare. And then here's a rival. Yeah, they're like right in between. There might be some other blasters on the market that use this ammunition, but not, not nerf. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. And I am starting to wonder why I bought it. I think it was just for the look alone. And to round it all off, let's bring in the most shameless, obvious knockoff out there. The Holokey Launcher Quickshot MP5K Elite Series. It's another Strife clone that exists on Amazon. If you haven't seen these before, 
Paula Key is one of the names floating around for them. Their gimmick is that they have three modes in one, single shot, three round burst, uh, full auto. It's all electronic, but it's also very, very delayed. It's actually very impractical. And I didn't realize it was like that until I got this in hand. So someone messaged me on Facebook that was clearly using a real name and they wanted me to review this blaster. And I said, sure, I'll just, I'll review the blaster. I'd be happy to check that out. Never seen them before. If I don't like it, I can give it to someone who might have use for it. Oh, beautiful. This is exactly what I need in my life. Of course, you don't need these attachments. There are a few different variants that come with uh, different attachments, but you know, ultimately it boils down to something that looks very similar to a Nerf Strife. Are they useful attachments? I don't know about that. There's a huge delay when you would actually pull the trigger and the battery, questionable lithium ion battery. Yes, I did use this in my Dark Zone Pro Mark III video, but it does work just based off of my initial testing. Oh sweet, a gift card for $20. Steps to get $20 gift card. Comes with a magazine and it came with a bunch of darts as well. A lot of them were the hard tip Vobery FVJ styles, but the others were suction elite clones, which I didn't actually hate those. I kind of like those darts. Uh, bottom line, the plastic is super thin on these kinds of blasters. Look at the magwell and the rate of fire is just super delayed. So even though it offers a cool, unique gimmick that is three modes in one, which is controlled from right here, it's not actually super, super useful unless you're going to mod it even further. Everything about this blaster feels cheap and it's retailing for a price that is above a original retail value of a Nerf Strife. Obviously you can't always find them for their original $20 value. You could say the magazine will add value to that. The foregrip, the front piece, all the other attachments would add value. It's really up to you. I don't think I would recommend these just because of eh, some of the questionable molding of this blaster. If you can find a regular Strife, go and do that. Or you can get a better blaster. And they've been hounding me to do a review like weeks after I got it to the point where I just said, you know what? <laughs> I'll get to it when I darn well feel like it. So here's your review. Thanks for constantly messaging me on Facebook. It's a piece of crap. Ooh. I've been sitting on this for a while and I very much wanted to say that. This is the one reason as well that I'm dubious about receiving materials for reviews because if I get something like this that I had the slightest interest and then it turns out to be meh, my interest to review just kind of drops. But if it's something I'm really passionate about, I swear I'll get to it in the future because there are some amazing blasters that people have been very generous to send to me and I do want to talk about them. I just sometimes get distracted by other topics and then things like this show up and I'm like, no, thank you. All right, here's the money shot. I tried to put as many of them in frame as possible without it looking too overcrowded, but this is my failure, my failure to review. So I pass the question off to you guys. What would you like to hear more about? Or was this enough to satisfy your review cravings? I think some of these kind of speak for themselves, but if you'd love to see them used in the game, I would too. Sometimes you just don't have the right game to use a certain blaster. I have so many things and I have to put them on the back burner. But if you'd like to see a more in-depth review that is just me talking about stuff, let me know. I'd love to dive in deeper on some of these. Thank you everyone for tuning in to this very well-organized, highly educated Galaxy Brain level review. And thank you to everyone who has sent me stuff. I apologize so much that I haven't gotten to them in the manner that I would like to, but do not think your creations are taken lightly. I very, very much appreciate it. Thank you everyone once again for watching and I will see you next time.